yoga. I mean, who doesn't like yoga? Uh, yoga. <laughs> yoga. I'm not, yeah, I'm not really sure what the point of the yoga was. <laughs> yoga is really about finding balance. Each of you have really unique bodies, and each of you need a different combination of mobility and stability. These high school kids, they don't think yoga is cool. None of us did when we were their age. They may not even realize the benefits of yoga. They fly across the country. They go through a shock and awe. They're up till midnight. They're up at six the next morning. They're getting ready to compete for four days. We got to do something to flush their bodies, get them primed, get them feeling good. Yoga is a great tool for that. Going through the team red, white, and blue, that was so, we learned so much about the mental grind and mental toughness, and I really put that into yoga the next day. Really just tried to buy it. Brennan McElwain, this young man respects everything, everyone, and he's constantly seeking to learn more and grow. He's the most mature guy we've seen in this process, period. Prez, I think we need to start calling him Prez. I think he'll be a president of the United States. <laughs> I asked him, what are you going to major in? And he said, business law. I said, yeah, that's kind of the track, you know. <laughs> by the way, you got my vote already. I mean, he literally listened to every word the instructor said and then applied it. And then inhale, lift up. Exhale, bend your knee and fold forward. Good, drop your head over, and then I want you to try to breathe into the low back. These guys are stiff, so it's even harder. They're having a instructor who's a beast. They're like, this, this woman's kicking my butt at what we're doing right now. Bend your knees so much, it feels good to hang forward. And uh, by the way, there's no crying in yoga back there. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Being around the guys, knowing that there's a couple of laughs and you just know what the reason is because you know how hard it is. It was difficult, but I really need the flexibility and I, I need to do more yoga, honestly. After that, I felt great. You know, got back out there on the field and it was loose and just ready to go. Nice. Good ball, Franks. Mr. Oh, yeah. Wide open. That's a big time throw. That's a big time throw. That's a big time throw. Big, time throw. big tall, thick jointed guys, you know, big sequoias. We call them trees in our language. This is the most exciting group of trees we've ever had. Russo, Beeson, KJ Costello, Felipe Franks, uh, Patrick O'Brien. They have the traits to really develop into dominant players. P.O.B. Patrick O'Brien. I mean, he's got the size, he's got the arm strength, but the beautiful thing about Patrick, there's a lot of competitive depth there. His mom, an Olympic athlete. His father, an All-American athlete. So I started my volleyball career in Sweden. Broke a lot of school records, got to travel around the country competing. This is a household that bred competition. What I did when I was in, in high school, what he did when he was in college, and what she's doing now every week in swimming, it's always a competition. My parents maybe get a little bad at me, but I, I still compete with my 11-year-old sister. Every time I improve my time in swimming, he always says, I was the best at the 25, and I'm like, I can't swim that anymore. So go. After first practice, uh, I think I'm in the top 11. I mean, I'll see where I'm at, but I feel like I should be. And um, if I'm not, I'm just going to keep working, keep grinding every single day, and make sure that I'm going to be in it towards the end. I think that's the stereotypical quarterback, the 6'4", 225, 230 quarterback with the huge arm. Um, but for me, that's, that's not what it's about. I can't see. I'm 6'1", maybe, <laughs> 185. 
I called him 6-1 and he goes, oh my gosh, that's the nicest thing he was ever said. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he always thanks me for giving him an inch or so. But he's a give me a ball and let me kick your ass guy. It's a baseball? Okay, let's go. That's uh, football? Okay. Oh, you basketball? Oh, you want to play basketball? Okay. Have you seen what I can do dribbling through my legs with a football? This guy can take a football and do the Steph Curry warm-up drill. Try to process that one. Hey, hold it right here. Hey, make this the best group. Red 80! Red 80, sell it! That's Sluggo C! Yes! Hey, way to take him. Way to take him. That's what I'm talking about, boy. That's what I'm talking about, dude. He stepped in here, he had a plan. Yeah. He was probably one of the one of the only ones when we first got here that I felt had a plan, and that was to be the MVP of the Elite Eleven. For a six-foot guy, there's you have to have supreme confidence that you're better than the next guy, and that you'll do everything else better than the next guy. Shane Bouchelle's stroke is as pure as we've seen in years. It's better than anybody else's. Really good day. So who won? I didn't even hear. I was Dang. just hoping. Michelle's had a hell. I'm just. Hey. I know we talk about it's not about winning all that, but tomorrow the first list is posted too. Don't be surprised to see Bouchelle up towards the top. All right. see your name in that 11, it's like, do I quit or do you continue working and you continue pushing yourself? Walking through the door and seeing my name at the top was pretty special. It's humbling. You know, I was at that eighth spot. You know, it was, it was a little disappointing. Honestly, the rankings don't really matter to me. I, I know in my heart and my mind I'm the top quarterback in the country. Not being on the Elite 11 list, there's more and more adversity I just have to overcome and just prove I am the top quarterback in the country. Sometimes when we don't have, we fight. And it wakes us up. And it becomes that we've identified a target that we want. We didn't know that we wanted it before. But now there's a group of young men that don't have what they came here for. It's important now for us to watch how they handle this. Are they a hunter? Are they naturally a fighter? Are they somebody who now has clarity of what they want and they're gonna go get it? All right, Malik, you're up, Malik, you're up, new group. Set. Perfect, hey, Malik, perfect. I know he was hungry to be in that Elite 11 and I know when he was out of it, he, he wasn't happy about that. One thing I've noticed in this group is anytime there's a rep to be had, Malik has grabbed it. Malik is grinding right now. He is stealing reps. Malik has absolutely ripped it every opportunity he's had on the football field. He's taken these things that happen throughout the competition. He's like, yo, I'm not cool with this. I'm not cool with how they think of me. You gonna smile now or no? That's all All right. <laughs> There's incredible freedom to stare down adversity, to deal with it, to feel that angst, and know that you still have what it takes to stand on your own two feet. Can I go to you? You just gotta pull. I didn't make the list. I guess I gotta prove more to the coaching staff. Uh, stay more focused with, with um, whatever I'm doing. I just, I just gotta go, go out there and ball now. Say go! Nice, nice. We see this every year at Elite 11. A huge name quarterback, struggle when they show up, almost go in the tank, and then thrive. To go! Good, really good, 
really good. Being able to go out there yesterday and throw the football a little bit, it was great. It was fun. You know, that's that's what I do. That red, white, and blue stuff killed me. Yeah. That stuff, that stuff's hard, man. That stuff, especially because you've never done anything like that before. The whole thing that they want to try to find out is one, how far is your breaking point? And then two, when you get to that, how are you going to react? I'm telling you right now, I feel like I'm the best quarterback ever. Yeah. Well, that's, how, that's the way you need regardless, to feel. Regardless of hype, stars, yeah. or, or whatever, I don't, I don't care. That doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm the best person here. I've seen everybody throw. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, one, no one here is better than me. Yeah. No one can compare to me. Hey, let's go, baby. Hey, let's keep up the tempo. Y'all quiet, bro. We're supposed to be having fun. I'm here, baby. I got a lot to prove. I got a whole lot to prove, bro. Let's get it, bro. Let's go! Yes, yes! Six! Just really felt good, you know, to show my talents and to prove to everyone that I am one of the top quarterbacks in the country. We're proud of you. Bounce back, pretty good, right? Yes, sir. Left. Set. Oh my. Where's he at? Money. Jet. Good job, Jet. Good job, Jet. That's a plus. That's a plus. I never go a day without working on my craft, whether it's mentally or physically. One thing my dad's always taught me is there's no such thing as pressure. It's all in your head, and it's a lot of mental games. I want to know what I'm looking for when you're at your best. What's that look like? What's that sound like in your head? This doesn't look fun for you. What's the mindset that comes before fun? Just having fun, smiling. Well, go do that right now. Are you up? Yeah. Let me see the swag. Ready, set, hut. Yeah, see, it's already there. It's already there. God bless it. Come here, right? The difference of that is unbelievable, isn't it? But it just looks fun, too. You see how it pops out when it comes? Boom. OK, so set that. Every rep, you're working on putting yourself in your right vibe. And then, and then focus on what you want to have happen. It's that simple. What's come to be my role here at Elite 11 is to help athletes and coaches better understand the mental part of the game. The mental part of the game matters, and it matters a lot. How many of you are curious about confidence? Hands up, way up. Right now, uh, you're in the age group where you're trying to figure out who you are. There's so many different factors, so many different parts of who you are as, as a young man that we need to embrace all of it. If you're not careful, you will adopt this sentence, I am a quarterback. If you adopt this statement, I am a quarterback, and that becomes your identity, then every time you go step on the field, you're risking your identity. Don't adopt that statement. You are not just a quarterback. You're a son, you're a brother, you're a student, you're lots of different things, not just an athlete and not just a quarterback. Michael Gervais the poster boy for holistic training in this space. It's impactful. You know, they get just enough to where they can actually utilize it within the week. 1,421, 1,400. Oh, One of the things we can guarantee will take place is somebody's gonna make some mistakes. It's gonna happen. Now, those moments are so wonderful because they reveal the psychological framework of the athlete. Felipe Franks steps right up. He raises his hand and says, let me see how my mind works, and I want to do it in front of everybody else. Dr. Drew, he did bring me up in front of the, uh, the group for a mind test to see if I could count the alphabet backwards. And I want you to go Z26, then what would you do next? So Z26, then I'd go Y25. Great, okay, you guys see what's up? So we're gonna see how your mind works under pressure. Okay, so whenever you're ready. Z26, Y25. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Mechanically, he didn't finish the task. It's a challenging task. It's real, and we all know that watching it. But it's different when we're in it. So you jumped right, up what? like, yeah, let me see how my mind works under pressure. How did you do? OK. So, so. <laughs> it just shows you, you know, there's just different ways to test your brain. And, uh, you know, that was one of the ways, and it tested my brain, and, you know, I, I couldn't count backwards the alphabet. Whether he could be successful in the mechanics of it or not, if he had practice, he'd get it. He could memorize this over and over again. But what happens in his inner dialogue and what happens in his body? That's the real test of how he did under pressure. Just him putting up his hand and stepping forward and allowing himself to be uncomfortable, that's the win. Literally, we pack 
but two months worth of stuff into 122 hours. But what we're learning is, you know, you give them all these tools and then they'll choose which one out of the toolkit that we've given them that's gonna best help them. My goal for you is to wrestle with the hard questions, to take yourself off of autopilot and to be the best man that you can possibly be. With people like Alexis Jones coming in and be a part of it, it's the full scope of a quarterback and being a man and being a leader. A woman two women have experienced some form of sexual violence in their lives. One in two. Who wants to gamble with those odds? Right? And yet, at the same time, this isn't some like Debbie Downer talk, right? This isn't gonna be like, you're the, you know, monsters and men. And that's actually kind of interesting because the way in which society is talking about you as men, and specifically as athletes, they are actually referring to you like as monsters. Like you're the problem, you as men are the problem. And the irony is that I come here only to say that I actually believe that you're the cure. Because it's one thing to talk about this in stat form, to see nameless, faceless girls, but it's really different when it's her. When it's your mom, or when it's your sister, it's really different. Because nobody wants to gamble with one and two when I just showed you 16 pictures and eight of those girls and those women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. Who wants to gamble with one and two? With regard to the girls and the women in your life, you have no idea how much you have an impact on who we are and how we view ourselves. Because this is currently our definition of womanhood. I am daring you to be more original than adopting someone else's script and their definition of cool and then having the guts to live that out. The evolution of the Elite 11 and, and the off-field development it's all to provide resources to these kids because football is going to end for them someday. So to just teach them football would be, I think we'd be negligent at best. I'm asking you to wrestle with the question of who will you choose to be in the midst of your success? Because you have the ability to have an impact and it's not just little boys who are looking up to you. You have the whole world looking at who and what you're gonna do in this lifetime. So do something awesome with it. With the platform you've been given, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and it is a huge responsibility. Be the person who uses your superpower for something epic. Be someone where you playing in the NFL is icing on the cake of so much more than that. So this is a little different than all the on-field stuff we're gonna talk about some off-field. For the last few years, Elite 11 has partnered with this organization called NIGU. Never ever give up. And it's this amazing organization that goes not only across the country, but around the world, trying to inspire children who are battling some sort of illness. And it's based on this amazing young woman named Jessie. During Jessie's fight, she actually made um, and stuffed and delivered over 3,000 of these to other children that were fighting cancer at Children's Hospital of Orange County, where we live. And she met a little friend during that time, and his name's Cade. When I heard Cade was going to speak to the guys. I was, well, I was fired up because I wanted to see what he had, you know. When I was five years old, the doctors discovered a brain tumor. It was right behind my eyes. And he starts to swipe and tell a story. Swipe and tell a story. Swipe and tell a story. You know, these quarterbacks think they know what it takes to compete. Well, they really have no idea. Kate has been battling. During the surgery, I had a massive stroke. When Kate came in and gave a speech to us, I wasn't thinking he was going to be, you know, I just thought he was going to say a few words. His dad was probably going to take over, but and he had a confidence, he had a presence about him that some of us don't even have in front of a group. Just like you, I, when I'm tired, I have to not quit. So I need you in the hospital. I need you um, playing sports. I need you. Do you? At the finals, there has never been a standing ovation. But Cade, well, it was instantaneous. Everybody was on their feet. For you, Cade, you are mm -hmm. officially part of the Elite Club. Oh. <laughs> he's a bigger part of the group than he realizes, and I think it was, it was really special, and he's an adorable little kid. Elite. 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 Elite.
take two of the quarterbacks and we put them with a courageous kid. And we just ask him to go off in the shade and get a rep at having a really, really impactful conversation with somebody who just wants to take a break. What's up, man? It was really cool to see Jake. You can kind of tell when they're doing something for the first time. But what was really cool to see with Jake is that it took him a moment. And he opened up. What's your name? I'm Jake. Nice to meet you. Jake, do you remember what it was like both times when I was diagnosed with breast cancer? When he sat across the room from his mom to retell the story of how she not only beat cancer once, not just twice, but three times. You forget about all of his ability as a football player. You purchase pink decal ribbons that you put on the back of everybody's helmet. I was so proud of you. To think that you did that for me. Our parents are our heroes. Our mom is our first love. And when they're almost taken away from you, there is, there is nothing you can describe that with. It was the first day you had to go to the hospital to get surgery or treatment or whatever it was. And I remember crying for the whole day and being torn apart and scared like I've never been before. And obviously, I'm out here, the tough guy, macho man, top quarterback. But football is really just a game when it comes down to it. Watching your mom go through cancer puts things in perspective where playing football, you should let that just be a game because that's what it is. And cancer is a battle. And keep those two things separated. So when you see Jake Zembeck have that conversation, and then you see him walk with his chest held high, you see him play with the Niku kids, that's, I think, when you realize he's the lead. There you go. There it is. That was good. That's our boy. I can feel a tear like about to come out when I see these kids, and it's just so real. That's their life on the line, and, and what we're putting on the line is being ranked in the top 10, being ranked in the Elite 11. You know, we're vulnerable to being one of those seven who doesn't make it, but they're, they're vulnerable to losing their life. We can't understand what it's like to battle cancer, but we can understand what it's like to have cancer affect you, and that's what it's about. Oh! There it is.